Welcome to Anime Watch Club, a bi-weekly group discussion and review where the host of the What Do You Say Anime podcast nominate and vote on shows that we either haven't seen or shows that we hopefully will lead to a great discussion. On today's episode, our Squid Game participants will be discussing the 2013 Ghibli film, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. Let's meet today's sacrifices. First up, he recently just got his first cosplay of Subaru and was mistaken for a homeless man. We have Johnny. Johnny, how's it going? Uh... First of all, it's not Subaru. I actually did want to cosplay as a hopeless man. And second, uh, I would not survive in Squid Game. <laughs> That's why you are one of our sacrifices. Thanks for joining us, Johnny. Second, back from his recent excursion from Madagascar, searching for the real Toucan Sam, we have avid bird enthusiast and taxidermy by trade. We have Parf. Parf, how's it going? You know, I was not able to find Toucan Sam. Apparently, he's not real. So. <laughs> How's Madagascar this year? Uh, you know, surprisingly cold. Surprisingly cold. So, well, we're glad to have you. Trip. Glad to have you. Uh, our first moderator of the night. I couldn't think of anything to make fun of him because he's just so nice and perfect. We have Miles. Miles, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. Um, my okay. So here's a story to make fun of me, really quick. Uh, I was at my bachelor party and I was playing board games and my dad texts me and he goes, you know, Hey son, like, you know, just make sure you don't get too crazy or whatever. And I said, thanks dad. I'm playing board games. And he replied, LOL. <laughs> so... <laughs> Damn, that was lit. Oh, thanks for joining us, Miles and uh, Pat. What's up? I have a cool shirt on right now. I don't care that I don't get an introduction. <laughs> I really don't. I have the coolest shirt ever. Um, uh, and, and so, let's kick ourselves off. Uh, we are talking about Princess Kaguya uh, today. Uh, or is that the, the full title of the movie? I'm pretty sure it is. The, the Tale uh, of Princess of Kaguya. The, the, the Tale, tale of, of the Princess Kaguya. Or Kaguya Hime no Monogatari. Or Princess Kaguya Story. There we go. We've done it all. Uh, yeah, it's the Studio Ghibli film from 2013, so pretty recent, actually, in their, like, filmography, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, they've um, had a few come out in the... Like, a couple, but not and not as many, I don't know, it feels like they used to pump them, pump them out a little bit quicker. Maybe they just slowed down. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bullshitting, too. <laughs> um, I don't know. It just feels like they were all made in the 90s, and then, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because they all look like shit. Oh, hmm. Uh, anyways, let's talk about Princess, uh, the tale of Princess Kaguya, uh, and let's do our usual intros, spoiler free, so since this is a movie, we can't do the first few episodes, so why don't we just do, I don't know, the first act of the movie, let's say, uh, how you felt about it, and would you recommend it to other people? Uh, so Miles, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, people should watch this, it's like really, 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 really good. Um, like, I was immediately captivated by the animation style, the tor the storytelling, just, like, how well, like, everything accentuated, like, the tone and the mood and all of that. Um, it's, like, it's really good. Watch this movie. Everyone should watch this movie. W watch the movie. Okay. Anyways, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <kidding. Of> <laughs> Perfect. All right, Johnny, what about you? What have you got? Yeah, so for me, I mean, I'm not going to be as positive as uh, Mr. Adam here, honestly. Who? Who? Who's Who? Uh, Mr. Uh, How dare you. Mr. Cape Cod, as we call him. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Show, put some respect on his name. I don't respect anyone. <laughs> okay. yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's like, it's like how I look at, like, Disney movies. It's like, yeah. You're gonna see it. You're gonna like have fun with it. But at the end of the day, like you kind of know where you're getting into. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just like yeah, I watched it. It was nice. If I recommend it, I mean, like if you're then if you're nine years old, you might enjoy it. Or or if you're a thirty year old man, I don't discriminate. So, this is like Jesus. the most thematically deep thing we have ever watched. It is absolutely outstanding, Johnny. What I would say yeah, is that if you're too young to understand. Like a whole bunch of different themes packed into one movie. Don't watch this. That's what I would say. Well, you know, if you're not an elitist douchebag, then <laughs> you started you know. it. 
<laughs> if you're a child or Miles, you might like this. That was you 20 yeah, seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what else can you get out of, a, out of like a folklore story? It's like, the only people who like it are nine-year-olds and 30-year-old men. Yeah, I like it. He kind of does have a point. Yeah, like, he, I, he does, I wrong? Johnny has a little bit of a point, but you know what? We're going we're gonna to move yeah, on because so, that's funny. Watch the show if you're nine years old or you're Miles. That's there you funny. go. All right. Um. That narrows down the list of people. Yes. A lot. Um, hey, shout out to all of our nine-year-old podcast listeners. Exactly. Shout out to all the love interests of the main character of um, a Jobless Reincarnation. Oh, uh, good show. <laughs> good show. We are, uh, let, let's, let's just move on. Yeah. Parf, Parf, what have you got? Well, well, now I know I'm either Miles or a nine-year-old, so that's good. Because I, <laughs> I liked it. I thoroughly enjoyed Wait, it. Wait, which one are you, though? <laughs> um... I'm guessing I'm nine year old. That fruit's Has anyone dead. seen Parfuli and I in the same place? Yeah, I, I never have. Add it, add it to the lore. Parf's nine years old. <laughs> yeah, we got there it. We go. Parf is either nine year olds or Miles. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I also would recommend it. Um, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say it's amazing, the best thing I've ever watched, but like, I wouldn't also say it's for nine year olds, and that if you, it's a Disney movie, I think it's a little bit more deeper. Than, I mean, even Disney movies can be deep at times, but like, the, it's good. It deals with a lot of themes. And what'd you say, Johnny? Did you say she I mean, changed it to 10? No. <laughs> <laughs> you change it to ten. Continue, please continue. Yeah. Please continue. Just go. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> There's no God. point. It, it's a good movie. I would easily recommend it to anybody, especially uh, the fir- the English dub. I think the English dub was great. It has an all star cast. Interesting. I I I think most of the dub was good. I just thought there were a couple characters that put me off, um, or that I didn't like the voices for. Um, the mother being the first one. Like in the first 20 minutes of the movie, it felt like she used the same tone of voice for every single thing That's that fair. she said. That's fair. Which, which bothered, which I was just like, oh, this sucks. Or not sucks, but it was like, oh, this is just like a vintage dub. But then, like, the the woodcutter and uh, Kaguya herself were both very well done. So I, I guess I shouldn't say the dub sucks. I, I I think there were parts of it that were bad, though. Uh, well, but yeah. it was just supposed to be. Anyway, we can talk about it later. It's fine. We, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, Pete, go ahead. So I also watched the dub. I also, I, I'm like in between. I thought parts of it were like really good. Would I recommend this? Yes. Um, my only, I really only had one real qualm with the show when we go into the discussion that I'll talk about, but from like a technical viewpoint where I like looking at like the art, the direction, the music, I thought this was so well crafted. I was immersed in the movie the entire time and I would absolutely recommend it. Um, the only, like, the only people that I couldn't, like, recommend this movie to is to, like, frat bros. Like, that's, like, the only, I, <laughs> like, the only people I can see, like, not liking this movie. I thought it was, like, overall, like, really well done. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I, I guess I'll go quick. Um, I don't know. I, 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 overall, I did think it was, like, good. And I did like parts of it. But, I don't know. I was... There were multiple times in the movie where I was sitting there and I was like, I'm kind of bored right now. Like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm not as engaged as I wanted to be. Um, maybe it's because I was listening to a dub. So that inherently means you, you have to be less focused or you, you don't have to be as focused. But um, I don't know. It's also a movie. So I shouldn't have been struggling to to keep up with like a two hour movie. Um, and then uh the art for me was super hit or miss where if it, it at first it was full miss for me. Like I was like, God, I do not like this at all. And it grew on me a little bit. And, but there were still moments where I was like, Oh, this is great. And it works really well with the scene, similar to how ping pong was for me. And then there are other times where I was just like, I, I don't like this art style and I, or I don't like the way this character looks or what is happening. Um, but again, overall, would I recommend this? Uh, I w- I definitely agree with Pete that like you could recommend this to pretty much anyone except someone who's looking for an action movie or something, yeah. you know, or isn't isn't looking for. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna say Tyler, but that would that that'd be funny. I think Tyler could find enjoyment in this. That's no, he couldn't. Never mind. Um, <laughs> he, he would just like I, disagree. Tyler would like this. I, I have faith in Tyler. I, I have some faith. He looks Monogatari, so... I, I think he would like it. This is not Monogatari. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> 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 Monogatari's in the title. 
He likes JoJo. This is obviously JoJo. Yeah. This whole movie yeah, well, was a JoJo well, reference. Yeah, well, obviously. What's Kaguya stand? You know, like. Literally the moon. The moon. The yeah, moon. it's literally the moon. Possibly. Why me to the moon is her song. There you go. All right. Um, but yeah, so overall, I would recommend it. Um, even if I didn't love it as much as other people seem to have. Um, like, I don't know, like if I showed this to my grandma, she'd love it. You know, like if I showed it to my parents, I'm sure they'd really enjoy it, too. But I just wasn't as engaged as I wanted to be, uh, especially for my, I guess, my second Ghibli film after um, uh, Grave of the Fireflies. But maybe that's a bad one to compare it to, because that one's pretty damn engaging um yeah to say the least yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh so yeah slightly different movies with different themes um but yeah does anyone have a discussion point that they want to kick us off with but first before we do spoiler warning so if you haven't seen the movie uh i don't know if you're in the united states you can watch it on hbo uh max that's where i watched it um i think you can rent it on youtube as well um Everywhere else in the world doesn't matter and is relevant, so good luck finding it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Canada. Shut up, shut up, Johnny. You don't have rights. Um, yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck yeah. you and your paid healthcare. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Well, hey, come back, Johnny. When you come to America to get a surgery someday, you'll be thanking us. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Uh, I go to America to get a surgery. That's doctors. But either way, all right, we're getting way off track. Spoiler warning, by the way. So yeah. Don't be spoiled. It's a two hour, two and a half hour movie, so it's something you can bang out real quick. Uh, but yeah, does anyone have anything they want to start us out with? Like maybe something that they really liked about the show or... Um... Yeah, I'll start it off and I'll be controversial. This is the best animation of anything we have watched in fucking Watch Club, bar none, no exception. It is fantastic. The scene where she is running away from the Capitol back to like her farm area when she's upset is like the most hauntingly gorgeous thing I've ever seen animate animated. It's so good. All of it is so good. It's super fluid. It's like a moving watercolor. I can't even get over that. Like it's just so good. There's this whole thing is fantastic. There's like one scene Fitting. where like the watercolor is like her climbing up like um like a rock step like up the hill and the background is just still and it's just so fluid. Her walking up the stairs, I was like, this is blowing my mind how well done this is. And it's just, it's so simple, but they just take this watercolor aspect and turn it into a visual masterpiece. I was blown away by the visuals in this in this movie. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll be the... Play devil's advocate, yeah. There. Yeah, play devil's advocate a little bit. Um, so, like, that specific scene, Miles, is talking about was definitely one of the ones where i was like wow this looks incredible this is really really well done and the art style like is working for me but then when there were still moments or when there were <laughs> the character faces on screen i was just sitting there like god they're so ugly or they're so like just not pleasant to look at i don't know really? I, oh god they're so good i'm so that, fucking so sick beautiful. of like stereotypical anime faces maybe that's it is it, is it more like, just the, like sorry is it more like the art style that you don't like or i i don't know man when i look at the character sheet there they all have just ugly like do you think kaguya has an ugly I, face no i think kaguya is one of the ones that's like looks normal suit maru whatever his name was looks pretty normal but like everyone else is just characterizations almost or like really stretched faces, really like, I don't know. I like the uh, the mother and the father or, or whatever you want to call it, the bamboo cutter and the yeah. wife. They did not like. Is that kind of the lines. point? Though? Are I they think they looked great. It, is, it definitely adds to like her supernatural yeah. beauty because everyone else looks like a normal human. Right, except like, the emperor, he was pretty ugly. I'll give well, the emperor was like a relatively attractive guy for this. You movie. thought he was attractive? everyone else. The emperor, the big emperor, the emperor yeah, the, the the guy with the the chin. I well, mean, yeah, that was a lot. But I mean, dude, I, like, I thought the I thought the princess looked pretty good. Uh, was I one thought Sunamaru. Yeah, I mean, I liked I liked the design of the characters. What can I say? I liked the design. I mean, I liked it. Like people aren't people look like that. You know what I mean? With those like drawn out faces, like old weather yeah. bamboo cutter, like working people. Like, what are they supposed to be? Fucking David Hasselhoff? Like, yes. I thought the art was great. I thought the faces <laughs> were great. I enjoyed looking at them. I liked the kids a lot. The, uh, I, uh, oh my God, like I love the games. Yeah, I loved 
Don't want to add that to the lore. I <laughs> I liked the design. That's okay, Parf. You're nine years old, so you're allowed to like it. Yeah. I liked the design of uh, the gang. Uh, I loved um, the expressions that they had. I thought they looked great, especially because it's watercolor. I think it was done extremely well. I, I do agree. Sometimes their expressions that they, they did were, were very good. But I don't know. I, just, I was just uncomfortable at times when I was looking at them. I, I don't know. I Maybe I just don't like looking at ugly people. So no. Her handmaiden? Yeah, no. Like, I love the way her handmaiden looks. Did you oh, just yeah. say, have, you, have, have I the seen handmaid. a mirror, Johnny? That is, I was going to make a joke about, like, <laughs> taking photos of myself, but, you know. Damn, Johnny. Okay. That was uh, really, uh... uh I just, hey, Pat. I don't know what... I, did, I deserve that Pat, one. Pat, did you like the art style in Ping Pong? Uh, did Ping not. Pong... Ping pong was super hit or miss for me, where, like, I liked the fluid in motion, in motion scenes a lot, because I thought that that's when the art style did its best, but I also hated the still images and the when they were just sitting around and and just talking like i did oh, their lips and their, oh, so you like you like like the like the uh, keo annie style of like animation is that like kind of what i'm getting uh, i mean i guess well uh, but like i've also liked regular art anime before i think or, or more vintage stuff you know it's not just like the oh keo annie the violet evergarden beautiful water scene whatever like that kind of stuff i I don't mind when it's stylized too, because like I really liked Mononoke's. Um, or I, I may not have liked it as much as other people did, but I did appreciate Mononoke's like art style when we talked about it. I didn't love it, but I appreciated it. Versus with this one, it's I don't know. It it bothers me. It gotcha. bothered me to watch, look at um, more so than normal. I guess is what I should say. Because like, again, maybe I'm just. Used to no, it's just funny because it's just something that like that maybe took you out of it and something that immersed me with it and i think that's why maybe we see this is still like highly rated on mal in terms of like a ghibli score but it's not like spirited away where it's like it's almost a nine or something like that like i wonder yeah. if like the unique style of the art is like that i mean it's a visual medium and people base their scores off of that it's not just miles who doesn't care but like I, I can see some, when I, he does, I, apparently, except when he does, and then it. No, it's, it's, I mean, I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not hating on Miles. I'm just saying, like, I, I can see it. stuff doesn't, like, take me out, though, is what I, I guess, like, my point. Like, I watched Handshakers, and I was like, this animation is fine. I don't really care. Like, it's not mm. that I don't. I, I probably, like, misconstrue myself. Like, I love good animation, but, like, bad animation, except for Blood Blockade Battlefront, where they just dropped whole frames of animation. Is, which was so jarring is like fine with me. Like if something's like kind of bad or slideshowy or whatever, it's just like okay, like sure, yeah. it's not gonna like negate it for me. But like if there's something that I'm like really jiving with animation wise, um, then I mean it it absolutely does you know enhance the experience for me. That's like the, fair. The art is part of like the theme of the show or movie, I guess. Where like. Not every show, the, like the end, like if I watch like, like, I don't know if you guys watch like Tony Kawa, the art could be like a 10 or like a five and I would still have given it the same score. Like the art doesn't matter in that style of show where I felt like in this sh movie, the art added to my enjoyment of the movie. Oh. Funny you brought up Tony Kawa, given the context of it. Um, Sorry, Johnny, go ahead. I did on purpose. Oh, you're I so was, smart. I was going to say that's probably on purpose. Uh, yeah. For I'm being really mean today. I'm sorry. Today, no, you're, Johnny, you're always mean. Well, no, I'm only mean towards you. But anyway. So like, I'm gonna be like the guy that's like kind of like in between. It's like I didn't find the art like bad, like or unenjoyable, but I also didn't find it too impressive. And like I was talking about it before, but I think it has to do with the fact that like I've just seen a lot of art like this. It was just like I noticed it. It's like oh yeah, I've seen this. But, like, I'm just, it just doesn't, like, have the same effect for me of, like, immersing me, immersing myself into the film, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Because it's from your, like, culture, because... Yeah, exactly. I've just seen, I've just seen this kind of art, like, all the time. Mm. So I it's just like, that. oh, yeah, so, like, oh, yeah, it's cool, it's, but it's, like, I've seen a million times, so it's just doesn't do it. So, so for me i think that they definitely chose this art style even like because like when you think about like normal anime there's like normal anime and then there's like and i'm going down just i'm not saying it's worse but like you know then there's ghibli like you know you think of like mononoke you think of 
move it house moving castle spirit away they're all like kind of the same they're not exactly the same by any means but they're in the same general like separation of zone from regular anime let's say yes. okay. i think this goes this goes one step further i think from being like removed from like normal style and i think that this was done intentionally because it's such an old story um which i guess i can tie that into my net my one of my complaints uh same minor complaints yeah um they they changed the story that they were covering <laughs> They, you know, the tale of Princess Kaguya or whatever the, 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 the or the bamboo cutter is, uh, like, I believe the traditional name. Yeah. They, they, they changed it. And I would, I, so I was surprised at the ending. I was like, wait, wait, what? Like, that's, that's how it ends. That's it. Like, there's, there's nothing more. There's no, it. So that, that threw it off for me. So, um, I mean, it was a little sadder. Um, well, there's, there's so many different. I almost cried. Of it. There's so many different iterations of it, but um, in the original, my understanding is that she does ha- uh, remember, she and she feels like she's trapped on the moon or whatever, and um, the emperor. Well, first off, it's the emperor who's trying to like convince her to stay. It's not her, the bamboo cutter, um, and and then she gives like a potion of immortality or something to the emperor, and then he refuses to drink it and then lights it on fire along with a note to Princess Kaguya that he wants to like return to her as she he wants her to see so he lights it on fire on top of Mount Fuji um to try and like get the message to the heavens to her. Um I'm probably butchering this, but that's like my general understanding of what happens. Um and then he doesn't drink the yeah again so she she gives him the potion of like immortality or whatever and he doesn't drink it because he doesn't want to live without her or doesn't want to be immortal without Kaguya. Um, versus in this one, they I mean again so big spoiler for anyone that hasn't seen it yet but she kind of just stays on the moon and that's it you know. <laughs> that, that, well, she remembers at the end that happens. I so she, does she? She got the rope put on her. Yes, she still remembers. There's like a whole yeah, she's dead. thing. She said, "Yeah, so she remembers." Uh, yeah, but then not, uh, that that's it though. That's there's there's no more like interaction between them. C- correct. They ended at a different spot. So instead of her going to the moon, remembering and then sending something back to her love, she just remembers and goes back to the moon. Hmm. Uh, which I didn't love because I was like, "Oh, yay! Like, yeah. this, I'm gonna get the full iteration of Kaguya." You know, like. I guess this would be my first, like, because Tony Kala hasn't gotten there yet. And unfortunately, oops, I almost just dropped my hand thing. Um, Tony, Tony Kala is probably not going to reach that point. It doesn't seem like they're going to get another season. So don't want to read the manga to get there. So this is like the, the other big anime that I can think of that, like, covers this Princess Kaguya, like, exclusively. And uh, yeah, we didn't get the, the full ending, I guess, you know. Um, no, this sounds much better than that ending. Um, you know, which makes sense because there's been a thousand years to iterate on it since then. So, like, it's sort of, I mean, I don't, I don't know. There's just always so many different versions of these, like, tales that are, th- like, you know, Robin Hood or, you know, King Arthur stuff. Yeah. Like, it's just like, whenever, like, I, I it is weird because, like, certain things I do get kind of sticky with, like, this like like a manga adaptation of an anime like i got mad at the konosuba movie for cutting my favorite scenes right but like if something is like this old and it's been worked and reworked you know thousands of times um i like seeing different interpretations of these things um i just like i think that's like an interesting part about the timelessness of these tales is like how you can um, adapt them to like a modern sense and like how you can like try to build in modern themes and stuff by like making slight changes or whatever. Um, you know, I think that that is, that's like, you know, not necessarily even just this, but just like anything, you know what I mean? Like that's like a really interesting thing about, storytelling is how you can sort of play telephone with it over the course of centuries 
I think so. I just think that this, the, you know, especially with the themes that it is trying to portray in this movie, that ending wasn't exactly like, I, I don't think it was exactly with along with the rest of the themes of the movie. And I think the ending that, which is again, such an integral part of the, the reason why it's so like famous in Japan is because like, it's like, Oh, it's the origin of Mount Fuji. It's why Mount Fuji is always smoking or, Apparently it used to smoke more. It doesn't as much anymore because it's less active as a volcano. But like that's the the source of the lore, I guess. And so it'd be like, I don't know, telling a King Arthur story, but not having him pull Excalibur out of the stone. You know, that, that's the way I look at it, at least. Well, it's that like, doesn't happen in the best King Arthur story. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, they're going to say yeah. Fate Zero right. or something. <laughs> Fate Zero. Right. Fate doesn't she, like, pull it out of something? I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, he's right. They, they do have a flashback a, to it in Fate. He pulls on another Excalibur, yeah. but only in the, like, novels. Or uh, visual novel. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, wink, wink. Oh, I get it. Yeah. 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 Good one, Johnny. That's Great. Um, Can I talk about something that was, like, yeah, my, only, my only, like, real... It's not even, like, a problem. I think it's just because of who we are as a market. But I really only know, and I want to get this, uh, your guys' thoughts as well. Um, I only really know the Kaguya story, like, through osmosis in anime. Like, I, I've i never read, like, a book about it. I've never seen, like, a show specifically on it. It's just, like, I know through anime Kaguya equals moon, essentially, is what I got from it. And I felt like if I was Japanese and I knew the folk story better, that I would enjoy this movie more. I just felt like not knowing certain things about the story took me out of it just a little bit. There's uh, Just for like an example, when she leaves her village and goes to uh, the capital for the first time, she's just like immediately the princess. And I, did, I didn't really understand like, why everyone just, like, accepted her immediately. And I felt like that was something that, like, I would have known through, like, folk storytelling and stuff like so that. She's, like, a princess. I don't know if princess is necessarily... And Pat would know better. But, like, I don't think it's princess in the same, like, vein that, like, you know... Like, in medieval England, there was, like, a princess. Like, yeah, I think it's, it, more, it, I think it's, it's more, more of like a lord. royalty. It, it's yeah. like lord. It, no, or, it's a lord. It's like lord. Yeah. Yeah, it's like lord okay. or or what? So my guess is, Sama is how they probably would have translated it. Um, if we well, listen he, to the sub, Hime, 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 or Hime. Sorry, yes, Hime. Uh, pardon me. Um, Sama is is the guy version of that. I think. Um, but I, I guess my question to like everybody is like not knowing the. Oh, I guess if you do know the folklore, maybe that changes it. But like either knowing or not knowing the folklore did that like change your perception on how you enjoyed the show or the movie sorry um it didn't really change things for me uh i'm I, the kaguya i did make the kaguya connection I, because anime hits on it so much so often that kaguya is moon so i did kind of figure that one out but the rest of it i didn't really know much about i uh the the lord princess thing i did know about so that i wasn't too off put by that but um, not knowing the lore of like the thing didn't really take me out of it. I was fully invested. Okay. So I was reading people's takes on it. I knew the story well enough that like, I I mean I I was also surprised they didn't do like the elixir of immortality thing. But I was like too hyped to care by the end of it. Um, and you know, so I mean maybe I'd be more annoyed about it if I was like not as into it along the way. Um, but people were like, someone was like talking about how they didn't like the movie online and like their issues was with like the story and stuff. And someone was basically like the response to that was like, you know, that's fine. That makes sense. In Japan, this story has been told so many times. Everyone knows it backwards and forwards that the emphasis on like details about like how maybe like a gets to be or like things like that are just so known by the audience that it wasn't worth that's why I putting thought, yeah putting that like stuff into the movie because it, it allowed them to focus on you know the art or the music direction or making these changes to like subvert some expectations or something like that um because you know it would be like if you know us going to you know see a story about like robin hood or something like that and you know we just know we know what the deal is right when you're going to see it so you don't need to bother 
setting it up. It's like how people are annoyed that all the Spider-Man films always have Spider-Man's origin story. It's like, we know we've all seen Spider-Man like 38 times. Um, you know, so that's, um, kind of the, 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 uh, sentiment online I saw regarding that. I am not well steeped enough in <laughs> Japanese folklore to know, um, if that's the case, but I mean, I, I definitely could see something like that. I guess I'll go now. So this doesn't, for me, it didn't really change how the story changes because i think like knowing the story might help you understand but i think like fundamentally like the things about the story is like anyone can pick anyone can pick up what the story is trying to say about like about the themes and stuff it's like for example like akira like i didn't like akira that much probably because like there was a lot of like subtle references to japan and stuff that i didn't notice because i'm not japanese but i feel like for this one there's a lot there's like not really that much of that and i don't so for me, it doesn't really have too much of an impact on how I enjoy the show. Yeah, so like with this one, it was, oh, by the way, becoming rich doesn't mean you're happy or something, right? And that's, that's like, like a universal theme rather than yeah, like yeah, exactly. in Akira, there's like specific things that you, like obviously Akira's like general theme is is like, you know, rage against the government or people. We live in a society. We Yeah, we, we live in a society, <laughs> funny. Um, but, you know, that's... So I think that, that that's still there, but then there's even more layers to it in Akira, like deeper, like you said, because that you'd have to know Japanese culture. You'd have to know what it was like during that time to fully get it versus again with this one. I agree. It was very, very it fun. expanded on them very well, but it was very like simple in terms of like what its themes were, I thought. Yeah, to get Akira, you had to like understand the socio-political like standings of Japan in the 80s, how it like referred to like the World War II generation versus the post-World War II generation and their thoughts on like atomic energy or something. It was like a very, very specific theme. <laughs> like, um, you know, and this one has, you know, you know, there's themes about like feminism and beauty standards and like how to grasp happiness in life and like things like that, which are in some ways present in like all cultures. Um, you know, so that, that probably yeah. is that. So we've already talked about the art. I would say the music was really good in this. Um, I, it, it was very like fitting. Um, notice the music. Well, I think I noticed it in the sense that I was like, oh, this is pleasant or this fits it really well. But I, there's not like a song that I'm going to like put in my Spotify playlist or, you know, I go back and be like, I want to listen to it again. But it, I thought it was like pretty, like pretty good. I'd yeah, say like, there's like, there wasn't like, there wasn't like a time where it's like a certain soundtrack came on and I was just like, I went back to listen to it again because, like, holy shit. I think this might be, like, a cultural thing, too, because I bet a lot of the children's songs that they were singing are, like, traditional Japanese children's songs. And if I was immersed in that culture and I knew those songs, I would I could connect with that more. If they were doing, like, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star or something, I'd be like, oh, I know that song. Like, oh, fitting. But, like, if I don't know these songs, it's just them they're just singing a song, like... I feel like it would have way more impact if I was Japanese or something like that. Another example of that, um, just like being Japanese and maybe understanding that. So when she was doodling um, on her scroll instead of practicing her characters, that is from a scroll that was found in like 800 AD, which is like the earliest example of like manga they have in like Japanese history. So it's like the first like story with like images that was like found that's like known in like Japan or something like that. So if you were Japanese, you would probably, you know, it would be like the Rosetta stone or I don't know, the constitution or some shit, you know, it's like a, a known, <laughs> known historical document. Wait, like, are you, you know, telling me the constitution is the first ever United States manga? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying there's a reason Nick Cage was trying to, <laughs> 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 Yo, I'm not even kidding. That'd be oh, I have so many ideas for a new manga. <laughs> um, new yeah, manga? Oh, God. The, the original uh, version of that was he he was trying to steal that scroll. Uh, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So, but like, I, you know, and I'm sure there are more, more examples of that in here, but that's like another reason I like this movie because like as someone who likes learning about, you know, culture and history and stuff, you can, um, there's so much like depth to this, right? Like you can really dig into like all of the decisions they made. This made me appreciate other anime more culturally, like, um, land of the lustrous, right? Like, I think this just gave me a whole new understanding of why the moon people and that looked like they did that like is steeped in Japanese folklore. And I had no idea about that. I just thought they were like, I don't know, like Hinduism is cool. Like, yeah, let's say, you know, um, is this a Hindu tale or like this has, Buddhist. does it have some religious like affiliation? Yeah, it's Buddha. I think it's Buddhism. Okay. I wasn't yeah, sure. It's Buddhism. Hinduism uh, B- B- is like Indian. Yeah. Buddha, Buddha literally yes. came out of the cloud, the moon and got yep. Kaguya. I'm just trying. I didn't know if that was a hundred percent sure that was Buddha. I didn't want to say. Yeah, that's anything. Buddha. <laughs> okay. Well, also like no, that, that he was, was I, also yeah, he was no, supposed was to get the bowl of Buddha it. for her. So there's that too. Buddha's important in Hinduism, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, no, that might have been why I said that. But Buddhism. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't being dumb. Like I could have been. It wouldn't be surprising. But I just want to make sure I was right there. My uh, Eastern religion is not as good as my knowledge of Western religion, so... Yeah, I'm much better at Abrahamic <laughs> junk than I am. Western religions <laughs> just kill each other, so... Um, that's a lot of well, religions. Yeah, <laughs> Shine, that's just, that's just history. Um, yeah, that, that, that is just history. Just we live people. in a history. Uh, we live in a... We live, we in, live a in a society. society. A I society. am history. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what was I going to say? Um, society. Fuck. No, before God damn it! Before we got into that, um, what were we talking about? We had um, folklore, um, themes. Come on, Pat, you got this. Oh, come on, Pat, Pat, you can do this. Pat, um, Pat, 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 I don't know. I I feel like at least one of the central themes of this uh, being that like like how they how they showed like the beauty of human life in like a very melancholy way. Like and so like they showed it through like the negative. Like what your life is like without being able like when you don't do the things that you're passionate about, that you love, that you want to do. Um, how that, like, you know, she she learned the value of human life through letting it slip through her fingers, basically. And, like, that's just, like, such an um, important message that I feel like, you know, everyone can, like, you know, the, the, the whole, like, just, you know, you know take time to stop and smell the roses sort of thing don't um you know do what you're passionate about um you know don't just like live towards like societal norms or something like her parents were very well meaning like her father was obviously a very loving and caring father but like at the end of the day him and kaguya to some extent and the mother they all just sort of got wrong what would make her the most happy. Um, And, you know, she finally realized exactly what was wrong, you know, but by then it was like too late. And I just thought that was like harrowing and sad and touching and beautiful. I I loved it. Yeah. All right. So I remembered what I was going to say, and you actually kind of brought it up in the middle. Um, I thought the father, one of the themes was that, uh, especially because of how, what time period it it is, it was in, you know, before women had the right to choose who to marry, especially a noble woman. And, and, you know, like the whole arc of her having to learn how to be a woman and, and everything. The, I saw a lot of people hating on the father online or, you know, like being like, oh, he was terrible. He was loud. And it's like, no, he was just doing what he could to, like, give her a good life in that time period or like what he per- perceived as a good life. So and I appreciated that in the show or in the in the movie they never really like you know there were times where she's like oh i hate you dad or, or maybe not i hate you but you know like oh I, I i hate what you're doing i i don't like this but it was never like 
made out to, at least in my perspective it wasn't made out that like the father was like a bad person or it was like a yeah I, evil I think he, in- intentions i think it was really yeah. well done because he he wasn't evilly intended you yeah, know no. he, uh, and you could see how much he cared about her at the end when he was ready to try to like fight god essentially he didn't yeah. do very well but like that makes sense um you know so like i i think that like you know he he was misguided and he he sort of I think he might have got like a little caught up in, you know, the gifts he had been given. But ultimately, I think, you know, like when it came down to it, he was just trying to give her a a good life. And that's why he, it, you know, at the end of the day, he sent that rejection letter to the emperor. Right. Like, right. which he he would know could very well cost him his own life. Yeah, he let um, her choose. You know, so even though he, you know, he, and you know, parenting is hard. Um, you know, is he like the best dad ever? No, but is he like a top ten anime dad? Yeah, and is that because there are only ten anime with dads in them? Maybe. <laughs> like, <laughs> hold on now, don't no now hold on. Hunter Hunter like, has dads in Where are you going with this? That Full was like... Alchemist has dads in it. Uh, yeah, those dads are awful. <laughs> don't you dare say Hohenheim's a bad dad. I, Hohenheim's a great guy and a bad dad. He left to save the world. Yeah, that's not yeah, being a good not, dad. Anyways, a um, <laughs> that was, okay. That was that was honestly the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> that <laughs> setup was that setup was brilliant. It was it was good. Man. It was great. It was. <laughs> Are there dads in Twilight? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah the, the dad. dad. The, uh, Have you not dad? seen Twilight? No, God, no. Why the fuck would I watch Twilight? Oh, it's <laughs> the <laughs> best anime ever. At the end of right. March, you will be. It's a great yeah, can, can we what just like say right present. now, April Fool's episode, we're watching Twilight. We're doing Twilight, yeah, it's good for okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, that's that's what we're all here for, right? One of the that, that's, that's what we did um, this whole thing. Here, here's what we're doing: the April Fools is Twilight, and then the following year is New Moon, and then the following year is Fuck Eclipse, yes. and then the following year after that is was it Breaking Dawn? Yeah, I think so. Breaking part Dawn. One. Yeah, part so one and part two. Baby. We we got five years of Twilight content ahead of us, boys. <laughs> that's what we, the whole club's about, right? Twilight. Why, it's a Twilight is, podcast. Why is Breaking Dawn the name of the final movie? movie you'll just have that? to watch the movie to find out you, you, you know what no, the, I sun, doesn't, know the sun doesn't affect the them. sun there you go that makes sense be yeah. yeah they don't breaking dawn would be the end of like a vampire's reign right because of the night well, actually it just makes twilight of the well, you vampires really don't know a lot burn. about twilight you well, are in for a Pat, where were you in the early 2000s were you just was, under rock no, I was reading Percy Jackson instead. Like, <laughs> the other I mean, I, I, like, I didn't read Twilight. I didn't read Twilight. I still know about this. Like, Sorry, then I went and saw about it. It. It's the and show joke. I, I was sitting in the corner playing on my Nintendo DS instead because it was more Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were more interesting to me than fucking Twilight was. I don't know. I'm it's like, the Shonen Shoujo. Either it, Percy the Jackson or your Twilight. Let's hear what you said. It's, it's the, the best piece of fiction. Oh, my <laughs> Uh, it's almost very popular. Honestly, can we just spend the rest of the hour talking about uh, Twilight? Uh, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> but we did oh, get what our... What your favorite part about Twilight, though, Parf? Please, do tell oh, us. Oh, you want my favorite read. part? Uh, <laughs> I, I can't because it's kind of a spoiler, but I'll say it. When uh, Jacob imprints on her daughter. Oh, that's... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, bro, okay. you're canceled. Because it's so, because it's so bad. Yeah. It's so, so bad. So I give Pat the thumbs up. Okay, I've never done this before, but I've muted part fully. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time muting someone. It, no, absolutely not. You're not allowed I, to say I, that. I, I, was, bad I, I was saying it's so bad. Um, okay. So... <laughs> I can't oh wait till we get to that. In three years, we're having Parfully back for that episode. <laughs> oh, God. No. Yeah. So, like, what was everyone's favorite, like, act in this? Ooh, I yes. I really yeah. liked the, the, like, marriage gifts act part because I thought it was really interesting. Like, when the first two people fabricated the gifts, I was a little worried that all of them would try to fabricate the gifts, you know, like it would just be like her, like realizing that they all lied in like various, you know, kind of clever ways like she did. Um, but I, I thought it was interesting to see like the different character of the men, like the one guy who didn't think he was like, you know, who, who was like braver than he thought he was, or he was less brave than he thought he was. 
Um, or like the guy who logically understood the message that she was looking for. Yeah. Um, but like it wasn't real, right? Like he he was just, you know, lying and he was apparently a bit of a playboy or whatever. He was gaslighting her. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they were all playboys back then. Like they were all <laughs> Well, they all had multiple wives. Like that's that's the thing, or most of them. Did, Him even so. more so though, because he was like, "Hey, let's go move to the f- fucking countryside and just like live together." And he's apparently done that to like thirty women, and like a bunch of them yeah. had to become nuns. This is a thing I've learned from watching the Heki Montagatari this season. Is that like if a woman who's like a courtesan or like a concubine or whatever is like no longer in that relationship with like nobility she had to like shave her head and like go become like i guess a, a nun equivalent i don't know exactly what it was um but they they reference that here yeah um which was neat but like i i really like that like that one guy dying i thought was like kind of funny that was pretty um, <laughs> just like checking all so the birds oh, that was funny. Uh, well i i i like I, I I liked it because it was like very easily the least dangerous task <laughs> that was given out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like slay a dragon, like climb these mountains and look for Buddha, um, go skin fire ferrets or whatever it was. Um, Parfuli, I've re-given you speaking privileges. Um But Thank like I, I just like really liked that because I thought it showed everyone's character in that in like pretty unique ways i was worried the father would like try to push one of them on her uh but he never did to sort of circle back to that like conversation um i don't know what what arcs of this did you guys like no i don't i don't really think he did like he because he's like, like once oh, he I found got... out they were fake, Cause... he was never like, eh, this is close yeah. enough. Yeah, because there's like one scene where he's like, I need to go prepare a bed for them or something like that. And then she like... The Emperor. Oh, the that, was the emperor. Yeah, okay. that was for the Emperor. That, makes, yeah, that I mean, makes more sense. The Emperor's kind of a cool guy. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, he's kind of like the boss of everybody. Just just before we continue, I like too that Kaguya like took the guy dying poorly. You know what I mean? Like she was very clearly phased by it and yes like i I, and i liked that because uh, you know rather than her being just like eh, whatever or well she didn't like hate them right like she just didn't want to marry them um which which was good though well it's just like you know like uh, another anime could have would have just been lazy with it or whatever like uh, i guess one that wasn't sticking to its guns would have been might have made her like laugh it off or shrug about yeah. it like no she was torn like she she was upset like visibly upset about it and that well, was like a breaking was... point too wasn't it like that was when she broke and like started destroying her garden because she was so just devastated and and whatever um but yeah sorry go ahead yeah no i'm sorry i like there's just like a lot of moments like that on this right like i i feel like the depth of character in this is like very strong like the main characters um like like especially Kaguya and her father um are just very nuanced and deep and human like characters um and i i think just like an absolutely fantastic way like i just don't think we see a lot of variety of like um, like emotion in the way that we we see them in in this and like thought processes because like kaguya didn't want the life she lived but she wasn't great at figuring that out and she you know she liked the gifts and stuff when she got them and you know she would play around but she would take some stuff seriously and like you know, she she just very much seemed like a confused girl growing up um and you know again like we've already touched on the father like you know he's a father trying to do what's right for his daughter but he's also obviously influenced by the culture of the era, which like makes a ton of sense, but he's not so influenced by it that he's not willing to make concessions. Um, You know, I I thought that was really neat. Um, The emperor hugging her made me like, like physically uncomfortable because no one had even seen her. Right. Like none of these other, like, and then he just like walks in and like hugs her. And it's weird because like, you know, as far as like kind of rapey scenes in anime go, someone just hugging you against your will isn't up there. But like it, 
it very made me feel uncomfortable. Um, which I thought was just a testament to how the show set up like the scaffolding for like the entire situation where it could, where you understand how uncomfortable that hug is. Um, I don't know. I thought it was really well done too. Like I, I felt it too. I was like, Ugh. you know, like let's just shiver. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, does anyone else have any? Wait, like, are we major... doing our favorite scenes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's everyone's favorite like arc part? Oh, oh arc, arc. That's right. Sorry, I, I got lost. I guess. That. I guess I'll go. It's, this is like damn. Probably... Leave it out powerfully like that. What? Well, he's muted anyway, so it doesn't no, matter. No, he's not muted. I'm definitely not muted. I know. I know, he, I know he's not. That was the joke. Sorry, guys. I'm just gonna uh, pretend he is. But... No, John. You know, what, Johnny, you go. You, I'll go after you, Johnny. Okay. okay that's so... very beta of you, Parf. You little bitch. <laughs> What? Fuck! <laughs> Someone what talk the about the fuck? goddamn movie, Johnny. What's Johnny, your favorite scene? Yeah, yeah, so I, I like the start of Sorry. the movie. I, I thought, I thought like him just accepting the fact that like this baby birthed herself out of a bamboo shoot, like, like little Tay is just like fucking hilarious. So he just accepts that like this baby, like the size of like a a pea, just like shows up. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go take care of this now. And then it's just like 10 minutes later, it grows up to like the size of a regular toddler. And I, I just thought like the whole, like the first like 20 minutes were like super nice and wholesome. And just like taking care of this kid, like teach, like watching her grow up, although albeit extremely fast. And so it was just like, I don't know, there's not much to say. I just thought it was really nice. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Well, not now I can go. Um... <laughs> Uh, Johnny, I just want to say thank you for giving me the chance to speak. Um, I actually liked the last part the most. Um, and only because, uh, not only because, but mostly because we got the f- the handmaiden and her full war gear just chilling there with the speed, with the glaze. Oh, she was great. She, she's easily my fa- one of my favorite parts of this movie just because she's just, she's just supportive of Kaguya. But I also like, I didn't like it, but I found it the funny uh, when she reunites with Sumitaro and Sudamaru, sorry. And um, he's just like, yeah, I'll give up my wife and kid for you. Like, no, without yeah. a thought. He's just like, yeah, I'll give up my whole life for you. Like, <laughs> well, was it? It was great. Yeah, because the girl calls him like dad, but like. Are we sure that that was a kid? Oh, that was definitely that his. Was, that, was just, yeah, that, that was definitely his pet. There's no like, question yeah. about it. But I didn't like know because he's young, you know, like yeah. relatively, right? <laughs> like he still is young. young. Yeah, pe- I back, know they did. The day, but they, they married at like twelve. Well, no, the woman would marry at twelve. The men would be like twenty-five uh, or twenty. But like, I don't know. Again, it just, especially in the countryside, it seemed weird that he was. I don't know. I think it's it, pretty I, clear that that was yeah, that, his I, like, I, wife I and kid. That was his it, it was pretty clear that Sudamaru uh, uh, just wanted to, you know, he, he wanted Kaguya. You know, he yeah. just wanted to give up his He wanted the second family. He wanted that moon he, pussy. He wanted there you go. <laughs> Dude, they have <laughs> killed that, that pussy. That elegant moon dude. pussy. Um, I also liked the well, procession no, no, of the gods. The I like the gods coming down to get Kaguya. I think that, that was a cool really, scene. I love the music of that scene. That w- it was just a great scene. Well, altogether. how cheerful that is compared to like, yeah, w- which is so interesting because like how clean and pretty all the moon people were, yep. and like how cheerful the music was and bright and everything compared to like life on Earth, which is hard and you know dirty and grimy. And Pat doesn't even want to look at the people because they're ugly. They're, they're um, so ugly. So ugly. They and, are ugly. you know, but like despite that Kagi has still loved her like life on earth and felt like she didn't get enough out of it. And like, that's like that juxtaposition between those two scenes that I just think is so great. The Sudamaru thing I think is also like just sort of encapsulates, encapsulates like the point or a point of it about like, not having like regrets with your life and everything. Mm -hmm. Like he realizes that it was just a dream to get back with Kakia. Right. And then he, what, what does he like goes back? Like maybe he regretted not, you know, chasing after her once he figured out where she was or anything like that. But like, he's able to like, just continue on with his life. And like, you know, he indulged in the fantasy for a little bit, but it's, it's not like a, a thing that he, ended up being like hung up on he was able to like continue on in his life which is like just so cool it's like, like a first the... love thing right like you, you yeah, never you never forget so, your first so. love or whatever even if it was 
15 years ago, Eliza Hope Miller still lives I, rent free in my head. My, you stole my. <laughs> hey, it's okay. It's okay. That. We've been there. We've all been there. We've all I been. Was gonna say that. <laughs> Dude, you never, you never forget. I've never the met therapy her. Bills. and she lives rent right free in my head. Dude, yes. oh god, um, I just caught himself from before he said something. Yeah, that he yeah. didn't want to say. So good job. Um, no, okay. I, I, I don't, I don't. It's, it's not. I, I just don't want to like, you know, have the podcast audience have to live through my trauma. Like, of course, this right. is completely different than that. Like my, my vision would be like her flying up and dropping me. Like, it's nowhere near the, the wistfulness of like a first love. It's like the first person to like <laughs> fucking gaslight the shit out of you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyways, uh, anime is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, my favorite scene. I, I haven't gone yet either. Um, or, or I guess arc. I I really li- like like Miles. I I really liked the the five of them trying to like court her. I thought that that was like probably the the part of the movie I was like most interested in. And like I like how they they took the formula of like number one goes the number two goes the number three goes and they like made it slightly different with each one of them and i really like that so um and i liked how it showed uh akagia becoming increasingly more frustrated by the by the process as well um to the point of breaking and yeah that was and then there's the sixth scene of her running back to the uh oh, the God, village so so, so there you go it all, all builds into like that per- that arc was just like probably my favorite part of the movie oh um, by far uh, which is why I just talked about it yeah. as my favorite part of the movie. So there you go. Good job, Pat. Thanks, Top tier analysis from Pat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, have you gone? I have not. <laughs> um, <laughs> my favorite scene, I think, Miles, you touched on it too, is the scene where the five suitors are in the room and she kind of puts them in like, um, in, put for like chess moves. Like they, she puts them all in check. And I like that. She's like, she's not like mean, about like rejecting these guys, but she does it in like a witty way where I feel like she's just like, okay, you want my love, then prove it. And I thought that was just so well done. It was really fun as a um like a in terms of like a tone shift to the movie where we got fun early in the show and then it kind of got a little bit more serious when she started like plucking her eyebrows and I think like charcoaling her teeth. Um yeah. That got a little bit more serious. That's where the drama was heading. And then that scene, it was just nice to see, like, she still exists under all of these, like, fabrications that she's doing to herself. So I just really enjoyed that scene. I thought it was a lot of fun. And it was just, like, a great way to change the uh, a rejection scene, I guess I'll put it that way, in, like, traditional anime. I thought that it was, it was just really well done. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Uh, I think we've all gotten to go now. I'm not leaving anyone out um but yeah we have we've been talking for about an hour or so um yes does anyone else have like any uh big major thing that they want to uh, to address before we uh go to our closing thoughts excuse me people notice her eyes getting dimmer as time went on yeah who i did not the the life slowly dimming out of her eyes yeah i i don't know if i noticed it like progressively but i did notice like the way her like face or her expressions and mm-hmm. the way she looked at life or whatever you want to say would change throughout. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was definitely cool. Um, why, why did she grow? So I guess it's like, Oh, like a bamboo, whatever, but does bamboo just randomly She's stop growing bamboo. and does bamboo stop growing at an exponential rate after it reaches adolescence or something? Or I think that... it's cause she's a magical moon person who got sent to the earth is like, a probably, like a lesson to learn or something. So they just like had her grow and like as needed in order to. She got Raftaliad. She you got Raftaliad. Yeah, she went up enough levels. like life passes that... by, you know, type thing. Um, yeah. She, so she got Deus orange... Ex machina by the moon people. Yeah. By Buddha. I guess. Yeah, I, thought that was yeah, 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 I mean, I is it, I guess it is a little Deus Ex Machina, but like she is like part God. So uh, I'll yeah. allow it. <laughs> I'll let this one slide. <laughs> Anyone to like, Pull that, you know, the god, the god of the machine, or whatever you want to call it. I feel like Buddha is probably a good exact person that's able to pull it off. So, you know, what? that's a fair point. I just, I just remember sitting there and being like, oh, so is she gonna keep growing into like full adult Kaguya, you know, or whatever you want to say, um, before she gets to be suited? 
like 70 minutes into the movie she just dies of old age yeah, she's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i mean i saw, i thought it was coming it didn't happen but i thought there I mean, you go she, she does literally have the power of god and anime at her side so mm-hmm. that she does um <laughs> Yeah, they, they, you guys want to talk it out? Like, like can you guys just blow a kiss to each other, something, shake hands. Like, I, I said, good one to Johnny. Oh yeah, that was a very serious good one, Johnny. Um, all right, well, Fully and Johnny are giving me some serious Edward Jacob vibes. Yeah, um, oh, can I say? <laughs> wait, which one? Does that mean that I'm? Uh, wait, Mel? can I be Jacob? <laughs> yeah, imprint on my child, I? please. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh god, god, we're terrible. <laughs> Can we just yeah, closing the thoughts? Yeah, I think closing I thoughts. Yeah. Miles, closing... go and your I... score. Closing yeah. thoughts and score, Miles. Please. So, Thank you. um, I I mean, I love this anime. I think that that was kind of obvious. Um, I just like, like, I love this anime so much that like none of the flaws you guys have spoken to me, I have thought have been fair. Like, I I think you're all insane. For, like <laughs> any flaw. Like I I just like I'm just like yeah. Sounds like someone who doesn't fucking get it. I'm like an Ava fan. Yeah. Like <laughs> or a Violet Evergarden fan in yeah. this podcast. So um, there you go. Like, I just it like Like I think about like just just how like meaningful this movie is to is, anyways, this is my favorite anime. I fucking put it right up to number one. Wow. Um, yeah. Whoa. Um it just like like wow. I just love, like I, I've just, I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen anything that portrayed the themes that it did, like in the way that they did. Not all of them, the feminism themes and stuff were like relatively normal, but just like the way, like to have someone like realize it's kind of like, have you ever read Our Town? <laughs> no, it sounds, like, it sounds like a country song. Yeah. Our Our Town is like a play by like i don't know someone from like 1920 <laughs> or something our town play it's a it's a famous person thornton wilder uh in 1938 anyways um at the end the the person like realizes that they like didn't like enjoy life um but like post them dying and because they can like still see the living but they like understand how they're like not making the most of their opportunities and they're just like sort of dancing through life and like that has like stuck with me for like i don't know when i read that like seventh or eighth grade or something like for a long time and it's just like this having like a very similar positive message shown by the absence of obtaining that um in like such a bittersweet way is just so great Oh, uh, sorry. Oh my god. Um, so, like, I love this. This is so good. Would you call it a masterpiece? I would. I'm giving it All a right, ten. So seven out of ten. Oh, there we go. Seven All right. Ten yeah. masterfully crafted. <laughs> yes. Yes. There we go. All right. Perfect. Uh, so I'll mark you down for that seven. Uh, Johnny, <laughs> what? Johnny, what have you got? Oh uh, yeah. So you know, like a lot of the points that Miles said, like they're pro. I mean, he's probably not wrong. Like. I can't speak for myself. I can't speak because I'm kind of a smooth brain. So, like, I'm just trusting what he says is true. But here's the thing. <laughs> to me, it's like, it's like going to a museum. It's like, you know, like, the stuff there is, like, meaningful and, like, has value. And your parents make you go because you have nothing else better to do. Cause you're oh, I went voluntarily. Dude, I love museums. I, I love museums. Don't, you're <laughs> I, barking up the wrong tree here, they're, but They're a hit or miss. Like, I, I like some of them. But I can understand that, yeah. So, but it's just like, it's just like you wouldn't go to a museum every day, and it's like you wouldn't watch a show like this every single day. I mean, maybe I, some would. Go I would. I would. I would. I would. No, but I get what you're saying. Where it's like, um, I wouldn't want to go to a museum about horse racing. I don't care. You know, like, yeah, but, but like, I went you to a quilt it. museum once, and it was awesome. I don't fucking care about quilts. It was still so cool. Honestly, I'm interested now. It's in Lowell. If you want to go to Lowell, it's in Lowell. Oh, of course, it's in Lowell. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Yeah. Oh god. Well, maybe, yeah. Maybe hey. This wasn't a great analogy, but you know, no, it was good. It was. It was no, actually it, a really it, it, good. Like analogy. you wouldn't want to go to like honestly, you probably wouldn't want to go to like a natural history museum every day. Yeah, you, you you'd want to spice it up sometimes, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's like, like, I'm not denying that it's like, it probably is a great show with all these values and stuff. It's just that sometimes I just want to see, I just want to like watch dumb shit, you know? I just want to watch people fight. I want to see some titties. There were, oh, there, are titties there. Titties. Just, there were titties in this. There, more titties than most anime. You're right, actually. Um, yeah, that was a, a shock when that happened. I was not ready for that. She, <laughs> that titty like, out. she oh. whipped that titty out. She She's just like, oh, I have tits now. And then fucking whipped them out. Like, good for her, I guess. But, like, it was so random. I don't know. Sorry. So, um, so, anyway, Jeffy, continue, so, like, please. Sorry. Yeah, so, like, at, at the end of the day, I can definitely see Miles liking the show. Half because he's a pretentious asshole, and half because it's good. But you know, yeah, the, maybe a little more than half. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm giving this a seven out of ten, just like Miles. But you know, his is a bit more. His is like a seven point two out of ten. Yes, so, there you go. I'm giving Parf a one out of ten, though. <laughs> You're giving Parf a one wow, out of ten. Wow, that's mean. What? We're being you nice. Guys are really. This, this is a nice You're... podcast. <laughs> well, good thing Parf gets to go next without any rebuttal from Johnny. So Parf, go ahead and. Speak your mind. First, I get called a beta bitch, and now well, that a, was a joke. But yeah, n- now a one out of ten, Johnny. I'm curious. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miles. Um, I'm I'm gonna keep it civil and just uh, stick to the anime, Johnny. Um, it it was good. Um, Miles is mostly right. You know, it's really good anime. I think the themes in it are do- very well done. I really loved the ending. No, I know not everybody here liked it because it didn't stick to the story, but I liked the ending. I liked uh, her looking back at her fa- her mom and dad one last time as she descend- ascends into the moon. I enjoyed that scene quite a lot, and I think it was a great ending to a great movie. I'm um, going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 already. Pete, what about you? Yeah, um, just saying back to what I said earlier, my only real qualm was just, like, not understanding the folk lore of this story. I think if I was more immersed in Japanese culture, I would like this more. However, I did find, like, the animation, the music, just how everything flowed together was just so well done. Um, I don't know if it's the best I've ever seen, but I think, like, top five, probably, I think is, like, a fair, um, like, guess on where I would, like, rank this as. Uh, it was just, it was just a really immersive movie. I had a great time watching it. Uh, how it wasn't, I don't think it was a masterpiece, but I did think it was like a very well done movie. I'm giving it an eight. An eight out of 10. All right. Uh, and then, uh, I'll be quick as well. I, like I talked about earlier, I didn't, there were parts of the movies I, that I didn't love, but I, at the same time, I could appreciate that it was very well done. Like, um, I didn't love the art style all the time, but the times that I did love it, it was really, really well done, and I can see why they chose to do it stylistically. Um, didn't love how they changed the story a little bit, but again, I can kind of get why they did, although I really, I still don't get why they changed the ending, because the original ending fits with their themes that they were talking about pretty well, so I don't understand why they changed it that much, but um, either way... I still I think it's didn't because enjoy... it's more focused on Kaguya, like the as opposed to like the people around her. Maybe, um, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, but I still didn't like it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but you know, I don't know, so that that didn't rub me the the right way. Um, and again, I don't know, man. I there were just times where I was just like disconnected or not intrigued by the story at all and or, or i was just getting bored i was sitting there and just losing interest at, at a few moments not uh, near near the middle and the the later half i think i i it stuck with me better but um earlier on it was there were times where i was like damn why do i why am i not enjoying this yet like it's a ghibli film like what's going on uh so i'm giving it a seven out of ten uh to round up our total score to 40 between five of us so that's quick maths that's a eight 8.0 out of 10. Yes, it is. So that is lower than I guess I thought we might get, but uh, 8.2 is what it is on Mal. So that's not, we're a little below Mal this time. We, were you, I feel like with movies, we're usually a little higher uh, than Mal is. Um, but yeah, so there we go. That wraps up our discussion of Kagi, the tale of Princess Kaguya by Studio Ghibli. Uh, and yeah, so now let's talk about what we're watching two weeks from now 
for our spoopy, spare, scary fucking episode on the 1st of November because the calendar just could not align for us. And we got close. So we close. did it. We were pretty close, yeah. But November 1st, what are we watching, Miles? What, what did we vote on? I, I want to hear... Yeah. What, there's one show in particular that really stood out, I know, in all, in all the voting. So I'd love it if you highlight that one for me. Yeah, but. so High Rise Invasion just did such a, such a good job of getting... In, in in a record break breaking like vote fest where we must have had like twenty people vote like it was just nuts. Which um, is awesome, by the way. So please keep doing that if you're listening. Or yeah, feel please free to vote. We, 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 had we, know vote on, that. we had people. Vote we know on why that happened. We know why it happened. Yeah, we should talk about. So like in the future, if you're listening on Spotify, there will be like a Spotify like thing, and you can vote for the show that you want us to watch, and we'll start counting that as like an audience vote um so yeah but anyway yeah, please vote we appreciate the participation and the influence yeah. that you had so which is why we're watching high rise invasion yes of course yeah. um so in third place we had kizu monogatari um in second place we had another and then in first place we're gonna just watch the tale of Princess Kaguya. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I love time loops. I this is consider your own personal Groundhog's Day. Um, we will be watching Doro Hatera um, with a record smashing twenty two points. Um, another had a record smashing nineteen points, but it wasn't enough to. Uh, well, there's always another to time. get it. Yeah, that's. Um, so, Doro Hatero next week, or next time. Where are your cosplays? It's Halloween, baby. I got my Among Us. Osplay. <laughs> I don't think mine will be ready yet. Um, mine's, gonna, mine... mine's supposed to come in, like, the day before I leave for Anime NYC. Oh, so damn. I'm very, I'm very nervous about that, yeah. Uh, we'll see how What, it what is it? Uh, you guys will have to see. Yeah, the, the, you, 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 you guys will see it soon enough. We'll we'll, we'll pull it out uh, eventually. I know what it, it gets is. Here. Yeah, you do, you do know it. That's is. so Kuriko. cool, Pete. You're so cool, Pete. Pete is really cool. I agree. Is uh, it Kirito? No, God, no. no. No, God, no. I couldn't pull <laughs> Kirito off. Like, well, I don't have that much swag. Come on. Um, <laughs> that was... Probably one of the worst things you've ever said. No, that was uh, great. I, I laughed. Kirito's, Kirito's great. I love Kirito. Yeah. Um, swag, though. He, he got awesome, though, so he's got something. He has, he has some swagger. He's got so, something. Yeah. A little I mean, when he's, yeah. is he he, sipping on his tea? She, fell, she fell in love with him in the game, okay? Hey, but he, he, love's he, love, baby. Hey, he what, the most what are we nominating? Game. Yeah, that's. I was about to say, Miles, you've had lots of time to prepare your nomination for uh, I have. this time around, and so I assume you don't have one. Yeah, I do. Still. Oh, you do? So, Let's hear it then. I, I'm going to start a contest. The contest is called How Hard Can We Simp for Pete? Um, if only so you knew. If only you I, knew. I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be, like, I, I've done this before. Pete, Pete likes some pretty questionable stuff. Um, but the last time I threw up something Pete liked that I thought looked like the dumbest fucking thing in the world, I very liked the show. It was super good. It's like I don't um, miss or something. You miss all the time. Constantly. However, we're going to nominate Laid Back Camp. Wow, uh, let's go! Damn it. So, you know, it, it, it looks cozy. It's fall. Wow. I can go with some cozy stuff. Um, yeah, let's do some Laid It's going to be camp. winter by the time wow. we watch it. Miles, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I love you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> wow. I love you too. What a recommendation. Holy shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, some shiny days ahead of us. Oh, um, nice, Pat. Thanks. Ah, oh, so proud of myself. Um, Johnny, uh, what have you got for a nomination? Well, you know, Miles was on the Sim for Pete side. I, but my vote was originally to fuck over Miles' wedding, but apparently he's just really into this shit, so whatever. I'll just domestic girlfriend again i love that i, I love wanna, that i want to yeah i, I want to see the dumpster fire happen. i'll vote for it <laughs> it's not a dumpster <laughs> fire it. it's not it's not a dumpster fire it's a well-told it story sure damn no, it. well the anime is a dumpster fire the show the manga isn't we discussed Dude, that 
I'll weeks watch from now. Dumpster Fire. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, all right, what we I can discuss. My review is like I want to see good stuff sometimes, and then sometimes I just want to see titties and dumb shit. So you know. Yeah, and you'll get plenty of that in that show. So there you go. Um, all right, uh, Parf, what have you got? Uh, it's Miles, it's, it's if we had the same plan here, I'm also doing Sim for Pete time. Um, I want to watch Asobi Asobase. Oh, oh, just, just these um, nominations this week are just uh, perfect. You know, it's I, I'm. <sighs> This really sucks. You know, it sucks. It's like the funniest anime of all time. So great nomination. You know how we, you, you never miss Pete. That, sh- that show has like an 8.2 on Mal. Like. No, it's a great show. <laughs> it does. It has an 8.2. I, I honestly, I think half the time is that like, I don't think Pete could sell like water to a man in a desert. Like, I just think the way he pitches things is like, it's awful a great half show. The time. Um, okay, you know, they always say I love you. I take that back. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was just a bead. I, I, I'm sorry. I, you just don't have good pitches, dude. And that's okay. Like, you have good taste sometimes, but like, <laughs> the way you describe things is like, it doesn't get me excited. You're like, oh, it's girls telling fart jokes to yeah, each other. It is. Awful. Miles, why don't you that tell us about how it's terrible to watch? Okay. Why okay. Don't you it, read his Twitch bio, Miles? It's it's like it's like <laughs> yeah. I I I say that. And you're like, that's dumb. And then you'll watch it, and you'll be like, that's exactly what it it's, is. No, it's a great place. He'll watch it, though. That's a problem. You, can, you won't get to that next step because I, I'm driving your the, first step. I, I'm was, a time You have to do what Has did with If Her Flag Breaks and just lie. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, completely lie about what it was. <laughs> do you want me to change my <laughs> nomination? Agenda of, greater than facts. Spe- uh, speaking of Has, uh, Has is back, by the way. <gasps> um, yeah. <laughs> Literally two minutes ago, so uh, some little uh, there we go. Podcast Lord Pete, what have you got for your nomination? Okay, so I'm also going to simp for Pete and nominate a show that I actually want to watch that I forgot that I had it on my plan to watch list, and it looks really fun. It has that mystery element in space. I'm oh. recommending Astra Lost in Space. Great, that's a great anime. I, I do love space and I do love mysteries. Good pitch, Pete. That is good. Oh, so, uh, um, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm flattered. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Did I still well, since you've had four people yeah, go, no, of course you are it, ready with a nomination. nomination. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, right. it just occurred to me that because I started watching 86 on my own, I no longer have a show to nominate for Watch Club <laughs> because everything else on my plan to watch either hasn't aired yet or is, you know, too long to do in our, our Watch Club segment. So, uh, you know what? I'll nominate. I'll nominate the other show that I need to watch from a few seasons ago, um, Vivi. Uh, I want to nominate Vivi Yo, and watch the that. Sip, the Pete Sip votes are off the chart today. That show is fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, that's a show that I still need to watch. So Vivi the, is think... uh, better tacked opt, right? Uh, yeah, it's a little different, but like they're both like futuristic AI music shit. Yeah, and it's too yeah. bad we can't do eighty six anymore because I got I am fucking loving that show. Oh my god, it's so freaking good. Oh. anyways, all right, that's those are our nominations. Uh, so please again vote if you want to. Um, uh, we we love to hear your feedback. Um. Uh, we prefer if there's no collusion, but you know what? Sometimes that's just what happens in in elections, I guess. You know, As if there's any evidence of that, uh, just in the past decade or so, you know. Um, but uh, way to get political, Pat. That always gets the people going. Um, high five, high five yourself. You haven't done it this episode yet. I, I to- no, I already did. I did. Oh, like did you? Okay. I did. <laughs> you definitely I did. did. I did like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, it's political these days. High five. There you go. I did a physical high five this time. Yeah. Um, oh, you can't get physical. That's political. What? All right. Well, that's a bad, bad Johnny joke. God, fuck uh, yeah, that's the Johnny. Johnny, you're doing really good this episode. You were. That Your average is down a little wait, bit now. Wait, we're going to try to improve it. Um, cut me out of this episode. <laughs> don't, don't get physical. That's Olivia Newton-John? It is. Yes. Okay. Cool. We got there. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Miles. You're not a pretentious asshole. Oh, what a guy. Exactly. Uh, and on that note, Pete, why don't you close us out? Yes. Uh, 
Yes, yes. Uh, thank you if you've made this far listening. If you want to support the podcast, the best way to do that is like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you are listening on. It helps us beat algorithms and it helps us get the word out. If you are in Minnesota this Saturday, I will be hosting a panel at Anime Fusion. You can win some dope ass prizes like Weather with You f- on Blu ray. Like, I'm giving out some dope prizes. So come play Jeopardy if you're in Minnesota or in the Midwest. Uh, that's going to be dope. Uh, next week, Miles is taking the bullet and is watching some seasonals. And we're doing our first impressions review of this season. And it's okay. Uh, so <laughs> get ready for a pretty mild <laughs> review. Thank you for biting that bullet for me. Because holy shit, I've only watched like four of them. And I don't care about any Yeah, of prepare for uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like two of them, I think, so far. Yeah. But you still have to watch Comey and Blue Period, right? I still need to watch Comey and Blue Period, Horns, which baby. are supposed to be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. look. <laughs> Yo, save the take for next week. Save the take for next week. But save, oh god, I, okay. I have a feeling. Okay. I, have, I have a feeling it's gonna be about thirty-five minutes of Comey and the Astronaut Show, and then twenty-five minutes of a hodgepodge of mid. So uh, look forward to that. Otherwise, in two weeks, we are going to be doing our spooky Halloween episode of Doro Hatero. So if you're uh, you're on Spotify, vote. And other than that, we'll see you in two weeks for Watch Club. Bye-bye.